Hey guys, I'm Jan. And I'm Robert. And we are here to compare these two infamous knives. Sage 5 Lightweight from Spyderco. And the Benchmate 940 Osborne. And by the end of this video, we would like to tell if we would trade each other's knives or not. We will not talk about the specifications of those knives because you can find them easily on the internet and by the matter of fact you can uh, pause the video right now and uh, see the specifications on the screen. So we have both been carrying these knives for quite some time now and we would like to share our subjective opinions with you. We have picked some categories in which we'll compare these knives and evaluate them. We'll talk about steels, design, carryability, ergonomics, most important fidget factor and many many more. We have also added one special feature. We have these white tokens and if one of us feel that he would trade in this specific category for the opponent's knife, he can give him one of those tokens. Let's kick it off with the ergonomics and design. The Osborne has a very slim profile, but uh, the edges are not like sharp, I would say, but they are definitely squarey and it just feels like a stick in your hand. So about Sage 5 Lightweight, the ergonomics there are a lot of to talk about. There is a finger toe with great and uh, pleasure jimping as well as uh, it's on the spine of the blade. Uh, there is a FRN which is really nice to hold to and uh, it, it's bi-directional so it doesn't slip off your hand. And uh, it just fits in your hand really easily and really nicely. To be completely transparent, don't get me wrong, the 940 is a beautiful knife, uh, overall design is gorgeous, but like when it comes to actually holding it and using it as a utility knife, I think the Spyderco wins it in the usability. Yeah. Uh, so I'm getting the token? So you're getting a token. Yeah, <laughs> I know uh, how to put the order of the categories. <laughs> One token for the Sage 5. I also forgot to mention those uh, small design shapes which uh, totally make sense when it's closed and also when it's open. So let's check the lock and fidget factor. Compression lock is great. It's uh, stronger than a liner lock and it's on the back so you have uh, your uh, fingers safe when closing or opening the knife which is really important to me. And also you can uh, open it with more ways for example spidey flick thumb flick and also the lock flick like this and it's very pleasure feeling to open the knife and to close it. If you compare it to back lock it's smoother and easier to deploy and also to close. In these categories it is a pretty short story for the Benchmade. If you have previously used or tried any Benchmade knife you know how the axis lock feels. It has great fidgeting factor like how the locking mechanisms just it helps you to open the knife fully, it helps you when closing the knife and it's a completely different feeling from any other knife. And with the 940 it's also the fact that it's like full aluminium knife so the fidgeting factor is more aggressive I would say and it's really clicky when you're opening and closing the knife. Yeah, I would consider giving you a token in this category if I would have anything else than the compression lock from Spyderco. If I would have a back lock I would totally give you uh, token for uh, this fidget factor it surprises me and you can also spidey flick it if you uh, practice definitely. a bit it's uh it's much better than i thought yeah definitely like when it comes to opening and closing there's also there's also multiple ways to do it you, i actually use my thumb to do it uh, mainly but i've seen people who are just sitting at a table playing with a knife by holding the lock open and basically just closing and opening it yeah, yeah. and there's also the spidey flick which I can't really do but yeah, yeah. it's a really great uh, fidget factor in this knife let's move to the next category is it ambidextrous is it for lefties and righties the same way well yes the benchmade is it's literally the same from both sides it's just the difference in the clip in uh, my case it will be a bit more complicated you can operate the compression lock with left hand but it's more risky because uh, you have to lay the knife on your palm so it do, you doesn't drop it because if you close it with the left hand you just you are just pinching it with two fingers and uh, you are risking of dropping the knife which you don't want yeah. to sure so you can do it but uh, it's a bit more risky and uh, I would consider to clo of closing it a different way for example like this when it comes to the blade shape 
deadly simple here. Reverse Tanto, also known for Benchmade pretty well. Longer cutting edge because the knife itself is pretty long and it's a straight line so you would cut through the motion and not basically push it. I personally have barely ever used it or needed it. It doesn't come extremely sharpened or anything so you would have to definitely finish it if you really like the super sharp knives. So the Sage 5, lightweight. It's a drop point, leaf shape, really famous uh, spider crochet shape, uh, similar to Manix, Chaparral, Lil Native, Native 5, and uh, many really famous knife. Uh, actually, that's the reason why I bought this knife. I really love the design of this shape. Just uh, the aesthetics are great. The sharpness from the factory of Taichung, Taiwan, was uh, shaving and still is after some use is still shaving hair so it's uh, the most sharp knife i've got from the factory uh, yeah, i mean that's pretty impressive and when it comes to steels i believe that they share the same steel yeah s 40 v yeah which should be great for the everyday carry stuff we try to research if there are some uh, differences uh, between s 40 v from spiderco and s 40 v from uh, benchmade for example due to heat treatment we found on video where uh, there is uh, testing of uh, those two manufacturers using the same steel on uh, different knives and the results were that there is almost no significant difference at all. Uh, we will link this video down below. So when it comes to value, which is the next category, the Benchmade comes at around 200, 200 plus US dollars. I got the Stage 5 from Blade HQ for 130 and I've seen it on other sites around 130. I think it's one of the best bang for the buck. The steel is the same, FRN, a spider name behind it. So it's a great value for the money. The next category is carryability, clip and size. Stage 5. It has a wire clip and FRN and this combination is not that much of a, like a killer of the pants. So uh, you can slip it and uh, take it out quite easily and it doesn't rip off your pants like in a year it will uh, eventually eventually show some marks on your uh, trousers but uh, i think it's okay when it comes to the osborne due to the anodized aluminium finish it mm, happens that some people don't really enjoy it for example my girlfriend she has goosebumps whenever she touches the knife but for some people and that's me some people really enjoy the finishing so I still use the regular carry clip. There is no deep pocket clip on this knife since I usually just pop the whole knife in my pocket. So yeah, I don't really care about the clip that much. Yeah, I tried it with the clip and uh, the pressure of the clip is uh, maybe too high for me and it's definitely bigger pressure than in, with a Sage 5. So I prefer this one to definitely. this one. I have the same clip on my Griptilian Mini and I've used the clip previously on my, on my pants that I had before and it completely destroyed the this. pocket in like two to three months. Let's go to the final part of our video, which is overall thoughts. Let's start with Sage 5 Lightweight from Spyderco. I think it's a great deal. It has compression lock, FRN, S30V, great blade shape, uh, the ergonomics are great. It's easy to compare it with Para 3 Lightweight, a really famous and probably the most famous and uh, the best seller from Spyderco right now. And I think that this one beats Para 3 in uh, EDC category. Okay. For me, it's the better. That's why I picked this one and not the Para 3. Yeah, Mostly because of the design, but also uh, it has the liners, the skeletonized mm -hmm. uh, liners. Uh, the shape is better. And also the FRN is more grippy than the Para 3 yeah. lightweight. It de like to me, it definitely feels more sturdy and more tactile. Like the overall quality, even like the locking mechanism, it's so smooth, it's amazing. For me, it's the best EDC from Spyderco right now and best bang for buck. I just hope we will see in more variation than uh, just the two we have right now. I just hope we will see more colors, different steels, some sprint rounds and so on, because this knife definitely deserves it. The Benchmade Osborne definitely sets the standards for EDC knives as such. It's not that great of a value to be fair, it's on the pricier side, at least for me. For me too. And on the flip side, it has the access lock, which is amazing. The overall design and aesthetics, absolutely stunning. The finishing, the green, I love the green finish on this one. 
Uh, there's also more variations of this knife. You could also customize it on the Benchmade website, I believe, if it's still available. And there's also the mini version right now. And so if the size of the regular Osborne is too big for you, you can go for the mini, which still does the job pretty well. It looks stunning. It's the same design. Everything stays the same. It's just a more basically smaller knife. It is without a doubt super popular knife in the community and whenever you talk to anybody from the EDC community everyone knows what an yeah. Osborne actually is. Exactly. So let's go to the final question. Would you trade it for this one? Or would I trade the Spider Echo Sage Wi Fi Lightweight for uh, the Osborne 940? I wouldn't trade the knife necessarily. I'm actually considering of buying one for myself. Uh, but I would not trade it. The Osborne is just an icon. I love the green combination, even with the purple scales and with the black steel. But I love the ergonomics of the Spyderco. It looks incredible. I love how you mentioned that the lines always match, which is insane. Like I haven't noticed yeah. it on first use and it's like an engineering masterpiece to me. Uh, I would trade it for the value because this is a more expensive knife, but uh, probably not for everyday use. Uh, for me, it's also a bit pricey and I would be maybe afraid to use it that much. And I would probably leave it on, a, on the shelf at my home and, uh, yeah, and to play with it because the fidget factor is awesome. And also, uh, when you touch it, it's nice to me. The aluminium, it's great, but uh, I wouldn't trade it for everyday use. If we don't consider the price, uh, this one is my choice. So thank you very much uh, for watching us uh, comparing these two beautiful knives and uh, hope to see you sometimes in the future. Yeah, and I mean, if you finish the video, then feel free to drop a comment, any questions, and we'll try to link as much stuff below as possible. Thank you again very much and see you soon. So let's check the lock and fidget factor. <laughs> yeah, I like it too. It's uh, really nice to touch. Uh, and the knife as well. It's <laughs> <laughs>